Hi and welcome to The Felt Hub. My name is Sandy and today we are going to be talking about felting mats, which can be a little bit confusing. So I'm going to go through all the mats that are available and also um, a solution that I have for a multitasking mat that may just um, make things a lot simpler for you. So let's go on in. Let's talk um, needle felting mats. And so when we did the Corgi workshop, somebody mentioned to me um, about the brush mats, which I have here. And I have to say, I've only really tried it once and I just sort of kind of discarded it and thought, ugh, don't like that. So I thought I'll give it a fair chance and we have a go at it again today. So I'm going to start with the brush mat. And I think the brush mats were kind of, um, when I started in sort of 2013, these were quite popular because needle felting was, you know, really kind of new then. And um, Clover, were, were their thing was to sell these these brush mats. Now, you really only use these for flat felting. They're no good for 3D felting because you can't, you know, if you, if you try and turn wool on that mat, it kind of catches in the bristles. So it really isn't designed for that. And also, if you just want to, you can't use one needle with it either, really, because it just pokes straight through to the wood. There's no resistance. So it's really designed, I feel, I mean, feel free if you've got any other experiences with it. It's really designed, I feel, for flat felting. However, I do feel that other mats work much better than this, but I have to give it a fair go. So what I've got here is I've got my punch tool. So this has got seven needles in and you can use as many as you want in this. You can, um, I often use five if I'm going, you know, if the, if the, once the felt started to firm up or if I'm going through a thicker mat, then I might take two out and use five. But with this, we'll absolutely use a seven. But it just, I'll do a comparison, but it just, it, it just feels, I think it's because I'm used to having something with more resistance. It just doesn't feel right. And then, I pull that off and I just feel like it's not really done anything. Um, so if I went, say, to my rice mat, always use a topper, always whatever mat you're using, apart from the brush mat. If I went onto my rice mat, then I really feel that that's starting to felt really quickly and I'm really getting into that. Yeah, I'm pulling that off and I really feel like I could I could then create my shapes really, really quickly. And then going back to the brush mat again, and it just feels really like light. I feel like I'm going to be here an awfully long time. And I also, if you look, what it actually does as well, it leaves a lot of wispy wool. So, quite honestly, I've never really used it and I can't see myself using it in the future, if, if I'm being honest. But if you have an, a different experience from it and, and you can give us some, some tips on, on how you found it to use, then, um, you know, that all greatly received. But as you can see, it's just, it's not really for single needle use. It really is a, a flat felting um tool i suppose if you were, you were making a, a flat coat to wrap around an animal and you wanted it slightly felted you could do that but anyway so i'm going to get rid of that because i'm i'm just i know i'm not going to get on with that and that's why i obviously haven't used it before so the other the things that you will probably have there are rice mats there are foam mats and then in in the shop i have these lovely um wool felt mats that's a three mil that's a three mil pure wool mat, and that is a five mil, 100% wool mat. So they're completely biodegradable, um, as is the hessian. And you just obviously you take the rice out and you use it again for your next hessian mat. So foam mats are great. You know, in my kits, I put the foam mats in um, and they are really, really good. Again, always, always put a topper on. 
anything. This is just a this is 30% wool. It doesn't have to be 100% wool. This is 30% wool. I think you can use linen as well. Um, my the project that we're going to be working on next is actually on this sort of cotton linen, which is quite a a fine weave. So you know you can use something linen or or a really light denim or a, a light cotton tea towel, anything really. But this is 30% wool, and I really like this. Um, I've got 100% wool here as well on the big mat that I've got here. That's um, a 30% wool sheet. So 30% is fine. You can flat felt quite easily. You can do everything that you need to do on a foam mat. And what I like about the foam mat is, again, something you can't do with a brush mat, is you can really sort of get stuck in and really get those pieces nice and tight before you start. And so this is good for three-dimensional. It's good for flat felting. Now, with a... The seven needle punch tool you can flat felt with the seven needles but because it's quite dense and there's quite a lot of resistance I would unscrew it from the top here and then just pop two needles out and that will make all the difference so yes you can you can use that needle so you can use the clover needles that's got two in but that works with three you can use um, an inline multi-tool, that works fine as well. One of my favourites is this one, which has got three uh, finer needles in, equally spaced, sort of in a triangle. Um, and that's a lovely tool. And also you can use that to build up the body, which I will um, show you. So that works well. So you can pretty much use every needle on a foam mat and the same applies to let me just find the top of that the same applies to the hessian mat but what happens with a hessian mat is you've got a little bit more give there so if you are flat felting and we've got you know even though it's a really close weave on the hessian mat and you do need a close weave otherwise the rice comes out um, you can use lentils are good as well um, they would work anything dried like that dried beans anything but I do like the feel of the rice because it sort of moves around and it's it's really flexible but if you are flat felting I mean it's just the perfect surface and if you're doing a picture and you're flat felting this is perfect as well And I really like the way that feels. So you can see we can we can felt on there. And then also we can do our three-dimensional felting. So we can use all the needles and do all the things on a Hessian mat. We can practically use all the needles and do all of the things on a foam mat, as you can see. And that includes fat, flat, fat, fat felting, flat felting and three dimensional. Yes, there will be kits for the seascape. Yeah, I'm going to put some wool packs together um, with some with like a, um, some photographs because um, it's it's um, the seascape. It's because it's quite repetitive. There's no point doing a full written tutorial. So I, I'll kind of do a more of a pictorial with some brief instructions. And then what I'll do is I'll put some video together just for the the trickier bits and and for the examples otherwise you you would just you know you'd you'd be asleep so um back to the mats so the hessian mats work well for pretty much all the needles the foam mats exactly the same except when you're using the the multi-tool the punch needle you will find that there is some resistance and also um you will find that if you take two needles out then that will probably work a lot better and then of course we have the lovely 100% wool mats which are fantastic 
wall mats that I have in the shop and these are lovely so if you were just doing 3d uh, dimensional felting you just pop that on there and it's really flat and really firm and you can really get stuck in and use that as your as your um, base and then works really well like so but what you can't do on that is you can't use a, a multi tool because it's it's too hard it's too hard and the same goes for um flat felting you wouldn't do that what you would do is you would use that as a base with a softer topper so we've got our flat mats here we have our foam mat which pretty much everyone has and again so important please use a topper it whatever mat you're using but especially if it's the hessian or the foam mats it will increase the longevity of those mats at least 10 times the life it would have without them i, I can't stress that enough so it's it's much better for the environment it's much better for the pocket and it just saves having lots of half used foam mats um lying around everywhere and also make sure you know you've got two sides and all these areas so make sure you're not constantly on any mat that you're using in one place because that will soon that will soon wear out in one place you know make sure you use the whole area and then so at the moment these are my sort of rice mats that i use but what i've done today is i have put together a double-sided one so you have the best of both worlds so what i've got here is i've got this three mil 100% wool felt on one side and as you can see it's quite firm but it's got a, you know it's got a lot of give it's got core wool in the middle there just the same core wool that I use in the shop and look I can really get to firm that up you know even though it's softer I can get right into that and make it super firm And it hasn't left anything on the mat so it's not grabbed hold of the wool however i would still would use a topper um once you start flat felting or doing anything other than 3d felting because you know you don't want to make another one of these or buy another one of these you just want to replace the toppers it's, it's much cheaper um so these are 30 percent wool toppers and there are 100% wool toppers and you can get those in the shop as well. They are both 30 by 30 centimetres, um, so a good size. And then if you've got smaller mats, you can cut them up. So that's brilliant. Works really well for that. Like I said, I've only made this today. So let's do some experimenting. So I'm going to put that on there. So to, we're going to flat felt so let's pretend we're making an ear so I'll just do a really rough shape and we'll start off with a single needle just to create that shape and that seems to be working quite nicely this is a 38 standard needle so it's quite a robust one and it seems to be going through the topper and into the mat quite nicely not too noisy And then we peel that away, turn it over. And then let's see how um, this side works with the seven needles. Not too great because what we've got here is I've got a topper on here and then I've got three mils, so it's a bit thick. So I thought you flip it over, you go onto the Hessian side and there you go. you're away with that and again once it starts to firm up take a couple of needles out these are just the same as the clover tools which you'll see in green but they're cheaper um, one comes from China one comes from 
Japan, I believe. That's the difference. So there we go. So that's nicely felted. And I know if I'd used the brush mat, then to get to that point would have taken me a long time. I mean, that's still really not happening, even though I've firmed that up. Take that off. And you can see we've got a lot of fuzziness going on there immediately, which you don't get with these mats. And then once it starts to firm up, yep, we can use pretty much any tool we wish on this side. I'm just using all the tools today. Single needle works fine. That works well. Let's go back to this side. Let's just try this without. So yeah, you can use your, your punch needle on this, but I would I would definitely, if you're doing the flat felting, use the Hessian side because it's just those needles will push past the holes inside that Hessian much, much easier. And like I said, don't always use a seven. I think what people sometimes don't realise is you get them with seven in, but you don't have to use seven. You can use one if you want, but, um, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, reduce them as you go. Some of you might have two. So have, you know, you have one with five in and then have one with the, the full lot to get it going. So I'm thinking that that might work quite well as a sort of dual application mat. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I just think if we can reduce the amount of mats we have, it just make it a lot easier. And that would that would make a big difference, actually. And I'll always use my foam. I'll always have some foam. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's a comfort thing. Maybe it's because I'm so used to it. But I always kind of have some foam to hand. But this is, um, I thought, I didn't think I was going to like it because it's not got the rice, which is really flexible. But I do actually. And obviously it's a lot lighter to work with. You know, if you were going somewhere, you could just chuck that in your bag. It's really light. You could make a smaller one. Um, so I'm thinking that that is going to work pretty well. Yeah, so let me know what you think anyway. And then what I'll do is I will work on this this week and see how I get on. And the other thing as well is you can use, if you're using um, cookie cutters for anything, then this works. If you wanted to do, say, a flat shape, this works really well. And you can still use a multi-tool to get things going. You might want to make a little brooch, so you might want that really nice, perfectly shaped disc um, to add your details on. And then pull that off, turn it over, and it's it doesn't stick. Yeah, you know, like as as it would as you would think it might, um, because you've got this topper underneath, and it makes such a difference. I mean, if you were to just felt that straight onto the hessian mat, you can see that those fibres will soon get lost in there. And and although it's it still works really well. What you will do is you will break down this hessian or burlap or jute, whatever you call it, and um, it will start to deteriorate and then you will need to replace it. So no need to do that if you've got a topper. That will just that's all you will need to replace. And like I said, this will last 10 times as long as long as you've got some fabric, something with wool in, some light cotton, light linen, um, you know, anything that you've got that sort of kind of works for you. And if you're three-dimensional felting, then it doesn't really matter because you're not actually, you're just using it as a rest. But usually there's some, you know, when you're making something, especially if you're doing animals, there's the ears or, or other sort of parts that you, you know, you're going to be laying your wool flat onto to get it going. And then back to this side. I really like this. And, and also as well, obviously, you want to keep 
that clean because you have different coloured projects. So a, a topper again means that you can flip them over or have a couple. So one for your light projects and one for your dark projects, which, you know, does make a difference. So let's try this on this side with the multi-tool. So that works really nicely. And I've got fine needles in there. They actually come, these actually come with the three needles and these are nice fine needles. And if you're working with multi-tools, you'll often find that fine needles work better because um, they're closer together. So they're, they're what, in, you know, if you've got really robust thick needles like a 36 or, or a lower number or even a 38, depending on what you're actually making, you'll find that the pressure of those needles will actually, instead of going through the top, will actually just push it down so you, you're not actually able to felt. Let's see what we've got here. Try this. So, yeah, so that's that's a bit more tricky. You wouldn't you wouldn't use the punch tool on that side for that project. But obviously a single needle would work absolutely fine. And needles do get blunt. Remember that if you find that um, you're um, find it more difficult to, to penetrate the top of a work surface, then, you know, if you've been using your needle sort of, say, for five hours solid, chances are it is getting blunt. So, you can, you know, you don't need to dispose of it, but use it for something else and um, start, you know, get a new needle out. Yeah, that's all working fine. And then here, just two needles stuck together. I think they are 38, although I'm not sure. And again, they work fine on there. So... Using this mat, I think, even though I didn't think I was going to like it without the rice, I think I actually really do like it. Um, this will allow you to use all of the tools, multi-tools, single needles, and you've got two sides to choose from. Depending on your project, um, you pick whatever works best for yourself. And then that covers a lot of bases with just one mat which I um I really like that so I think you know I'll work with it this week see how I feel and then I think I'll get some made and I'll put them in the shop but if you want to make them at home then um this is three mil felt so your normal your toppers will be about 1.2 mils not very thick but that's all you want because you want to be able to penetrate them but the actual base itself is going to be a, a much thicker, um, tighter um, mat. So that's three mil, 100% wool. And then, you like I say, you've got your nice, tight, hessian mat on the other side. So I'm pretty pleased with those. So really, you know, just, just going back to it, it is horses for courses. It is personal preference. But there are a lot of mats out there and it can be quite, um, you, the table can be full of them. You think, oh, what, you know, you just, you just want to pick up a mat and know that it's going to do most of the work for you. So I think that's probably going to be a good alternative. And I'm all about making things easier. And then, of course, if you like this particular surface, just just working on this or if you're just doing three-dimensional then you know you could make yourself a double-sided one um again remembering that you know you wouldn't be able to use a seven punch needle tool on there you'd have to take a couple of needles out of it but it will still take all the multi-tools um and i think i don't think i've I think I've covered everything there. Yeah. So I hope that um, that's been helpful. Um, I know there's a, there's a lot to choose from, but I'm, I'm just trying to make it a little bit easier for you. And I do think that this double sided option is a good way to go. And like I said, I'll, what I'll do is I'll make some um, flat ones that are not filled. So I'll make these that are completed, ready to go with the light core wool inside. 
and then I'll do a flat version with just a little gap like I do with the other rice mats and then you can fill that with rice if that's your preference. So um, that's it really. Um, I'll see you all soon. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye.